This is by far one of the biggest misconceptions that I find people have when it comes to academic writing style and sort of the language that you have to be using if you want to write research papers. What is it? Well, a lot of people really argue that, you know, you should be using we and I more often. And I've heard it a lot from my clients where they say, well, in my field, my supervisor is telling me to use the active voice. I cannot use the passive voice. The passive voice might be more applicable in, you know, let's say physics or chemistry, but you know, I'm more in social sciences, so we should be using we and I, we should be using the active voice. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you why this is completely not true, and it's one of the biggest misconceptions that people have. If you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowek and I run Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers publish papers in high-impact Scopus Index journals. So if you're wondering yourself as well, whether you should be using the active voice, I or we, or whether you should be using more of the passive voice, then this video will show you exactly what you need to do depending which field you're in. And I'm gonna break it down to sort of three types of fields. So we're gonna look at more exact sciences, very quantitative fields, such as let's say physics, chemistry, that sort of thing. Then we're gonna look at more qualitative fields, such as social sciences, but that still, you know, employ some quantitative methods. And then we look at, going to look at very sort of qualitative fields like anthropology, for example. And I'm going to show you how in each of these types of fields, people use the active voice, I or we, or the passive voice. And this is really going to clarify what I think is one of the biggest misconceptions when it comes to academic writing style. So let's dive right in. Recently, I've noticed that there is a little bit of confusion whether, you know, you should use we, you shouldn't use we, should you use the active voice or should you use the, the passive voice when writing research papers or your PhD thesis. So I wanted to clarify that. Um, so that you know when to use we and when not to use we or I in case you know you, you did the study yourself and when to use active voice and when to use the passive voice. So one thing I'll say straight away is that using the passive voice, especially in the materials and method, is much more common than using we. It's much more common. And I'm saying that based on you know experience of reading papers from all sorts of different fields, starting with like anthropology, very qualitative fields, through, you know, medicine and teaching English, business, management, um, and all sorts of different fields. And I'm telling you, using the passive voice, especially in the methodology, is way more common than using we. And even in very qualitative fields, the use of passive voice is still there. So nobody ever uses we in every single sentence, especially in the methodology section of your paper. And I wanted to show you that on a couple of examples from different fields so you're clear on that as well. Of course, you still want to check with your own field and what your supervisor prefers, but please don't misunderstand someone if they say like you should use active voice more often. That doesn't mean that you should use we in every single sentence. Please don't do that because believe me, nobody ever starts every sentence with we in the methodology section, especially. It's just not done, okay? Let's look at this paper first. So this is a more quantitative um, field, um, right? It's, it's exact sciences. They, they talk about proteins, hydrolysis, and, and all that kind of um, stuff, right? So a more quantitative field. And you can see a couple of examples of we here, but there's very little, really. Um, if we search this document, there are only actually seven examples of we all together. Um, it's used in the aim, right, to present kind of what the aim is, and then also to present the structure of the paper, like in the discussion we related, da da da. But in the materials and methods, it's almost not used. If we search for the next um, we, really it's you know, it's way down in the paper here where the writer already presents the conclusion. So it's used here in the conclusion section, but not in the methodology. So if we scroll up, um, I want you to see the methodology section. You can see all the methodology here is written in the passive voice. For example, the batter was whipped. 
the, the writer doesn't say we whipped the butter, the writer says the butter was whipped. Same here, all sugar had been added, you know, not, you know, once we had added all the sugar, right? So this is an example of a, of a very much a quantitative field where we is almost never used. So if you're in that sort of quantitative field, let's say, you know, physics, medicine, food sciences, and, and things like that, you will want to avoid we as much as possible, especially in the methodology section. You might use it to state your aim, maybe once or twice in the conclusion, but that's about it. Now, if we move to something you know, more sort of social sciences, something slightly more qualitative. So this is, um, this is about education, 21st century digital skills and all those kind of things. And this is a systematic review, not an experimental paper. Now in here, what you're going to see is that the methodology section, especially is a mixture of passive voice and we. So even if we just look at the first paragraph of the of the method, take a look at this sentence. This method was chosen. This is passive voice. Now again, uh, the systematic review was conducted. This is again passive voice. Okay. Now in between we have we. So we have active voice. We look. Okay. And then you've got the checklist items were included. That's again the passive voice. It's not. It's not active voice. It's not we. You know. Same here. Uh, diagram were used. Okay, so you can actually see that in this paragraph, if we look at it, uh, I mean, we've got one we and then one, two, three, four times passive voice and just one we. And it's kind of the same, you know, if we continue looking at the rest of the paper. So we've got was conducted, so that's passive voice. And then in here, we've got active, we used. I'll highlight that as well for you. And then, you know, was conducted, that's, that's passive voice. So what you're going to see is that you've got a mix, you know, it's not even 50, 50, the passive voice seems to be used even more often than we, and as I said, this is, this is a more qualitative field. This is social sciences. So even again, if you're in social sciences, you're going to have to use the passive voice. You know, you can't start every single sentence with we in the methodology section It's just not going to fly. Believe me, no matter how qualitative your field is. And the last example that I wanted to show you is something very, very qualitative. It's a, it's a dual ethnography, you know, and an ethnographic study is, you know, is something very qualitative, very subjective. So in here, of course, you will see we more often. For example, we aimed to, right? We also wanted to show, okay? However, you will also see passive voice. For example, we've got is highlighted in here so that's that's passive voice right is highlighted so that's one example you've got another example in here which are then carefully analyzed that's also the passive voice so again just to just to reiterate you know in no field no matter how qualitative it's going to be will you use we exclusively okay you will have to use the passive voice in more quantitative fields, exact sciences, you will almost exclusively use the passive voice, especially in the methodology, as we saw um, here. And we will might be restricted just to the conclusion or maybe stating the aim, if that at all. In a slightly more social sciences oriented field, qualitative field, you might use we in the methodology, but very often, even more often than we, you're going to use the passive voice. Okay, so if somebody tells you to use we more often, please don't use it in every sentence because nobody uses we in every sentence in the methodology. Now, if you want to work with me personally and help you to write and publish papers in top Scopus Index Journal, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation with my team where we're going to identify what your biggest challenges are, outline your goals, and then we're going to propose a simple three, four step plan that will take you to those goals with less effort and faster and you can book this consultation right below this video.